All right, so we are in John chapter nine. And this is the sixth out of seven miracles that the book of John is kind of written around. And so um, we're going to take a look at that miracle, but also we, we need to remember what just happened. What just happened in chapter eight? Anyone? Jesus just confessed that he was God. Exactly. He said, before Abraham was, I am. What was the Pharisee's response to that little tidbit of info? Well, to put it really short, who's your daddy? <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah, Jesus was, Jesus was, asked, Jesus was basically telling them who their father was and revealing who his father was. And in the process of doing so, revealing his divinity. Now, what's really interesting is that whether or not this happened as Jesus was leaving the temple, it really doesn't matter if it was immediate or if it was later. John purposefully puts this miracle here right after Jesus is claimed to be the I am, the creator. And so it's very interesting to see. Um, it's very interesting to see what, what transpires. I broke this up, I believe, into seven parts. Um, main parts, a lot of little sub parts under those. But the first part is John 9, 1 through 5, and I've called it the discussion. And then the second part is John 9, 6, and 7. And I titled that the demonstration. The third part, John 9, 8 through 17, I have entitled that The Division. Then the fourth part, which is John 9, 18 through 21, I've entitled The Interrogation. The fifth part, John 9, 22 through 24, I have entitled The Intimidation. Part 6, John 9, 27 through 33, but also including verse 17, I have entitled The Indictment. And part seven, which is John 9, 34 through 41, I've entitled The Important. So we have the discussion, the demonstration, the division, the interrogation, the intimidation, the indictment, and the important, okay? So um, we're going to walk through that. Uh, John chapter 9, and I'll tell you what, let's have Pat, would you read for us that entire chapter? Okie doke. Uh, New American Standard Version. John 9, as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Jesus answered, it was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed 
in him. We must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day, night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and applied the clay to his eyes and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went away and washed and came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously saw him as a beggar were saying, is not this the one who used to sit and beg? Others were saying, this is he. Still others were saying, no, but he is, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the one. So they were saying to him, how then were your eyes opened? He answered, the man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Salome and wash. So I went away and washed and I received sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who was formerly blind. Now it was a Sabbath on the day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also were asking him again how he received his sight. And he said to them, he applied clay to my eyes and I washed and I see. Therefore, some of the Pharisees were saying, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others were saying, <coughs> excuse me, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you say about him since he opened your eyes? And he said, he is a prophet. The Jews then did not believe it of him that he had been blind and had received sight until they called the parents of the very one who had received his sight and questioned them saying, is this your son who you say was born blind? Then how does he now see? His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone confessed him to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He then answered, whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You do not want to become his disciples too, do you? They reviled him and said, you are his disciple, his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. As for this man, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, well, here is an amazing thing, that you do not know where he is from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and does his will, he hears him. Since the beginning of time, it has never been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sin, and are you teaching us? So they put him out. Jesus heard that they had put him out. And finding him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered, who is he? Lord, that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have both seen him and he is the one who is talking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment, I came into the world so that those who do not see me see may see and that those who see may become blind. Those of the Pharisees were with him, heard these things and said to him, we are not blind too, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But since you say, we see, your sin remains. And there you go. There you go. So that is a uh, pretty enthralling story of what goes on there. And there's a lot there that I think that we need to look at and realize. So let's look at the first five verses there, which I entitled the discussion. 
And there's four points here. It, first, let me read it again. It says, and as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. Now, the verse, at, the verse before this says, therefore they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. And then the next is as he passed by. So is it possible, and I think it is, that Jesus was leaving the temple when he saw this man? It's, it's, it's completely possible. Um, we don't know for sure, for sure, but whether it is or not, John purposefully placed these verses here to be a witness and, uh, and a, uh, testimony to what Christ had said in, in verse, uh, 58 of chapter 8 which is verily verily i say to you before abraham was i am which is a pretty strong statement so there's a few things i want to point out here it says he passed by and he saw a man blind from birth and his disciples asked him rabbi who sinned this man or his parents that he would be born blind and jesus answered it was neither this this man it is neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, let me ask you, what do you see as a difference here between Jesus's response or Jesus's view of the man and the disciples view of the man there's I, I really see a danger here in the in the disciples heading down the road of the Pharisees and and the reason I say that is is that Jesus sees the man and the humanity the disciples look at this man in suffering and see a theological question. There doesn't seem to be any indication that the disciples had any compassion on this guy. In fact, their questioning about him is pretty derogatory. Why is this man? They're not, they don't care about his suffering. They care about the theological question of why he's blind. Is it his fault or his parents' fault? Which, by the way, reveals that they grew up with some bad theology to begin with. Now, they're, they were taught this by the Pharisees, and that was, was, was a common uh, teaching at that day that if someone was born, uh with an ailment that either their parents had sinned or they had sinned and so there was an excuse to have a lack of compassion on them and it's just very interesting that jesus it says jesus saw the man born blind and his disciples ask him, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his? There's no indication of any compassion on this man who has been begging his entire life because he has no other choice but to do so. At never being able to enter into the temple, never being able to... Uh, partake in that and there's no broken heartedness or compassion by the disciples for the the position this man is in instead they have a theological question because that suits their their own spiritual pride but what does Jesus, how does Jesus respond to that? It says, Jesus answered, 
It was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Jesus dismisses their bad theology and brings <clears throat> their attention back to the fact that this man was created in the image of God. And so there should be a natural dignity, and we were, we were kind of talking about that earlier in regards to the homeless situation, and there's always been homeless, or I mean, back in the 30s and 40s, they were called hobos, but that's always been a situation, and we know that the situation is mainly driven by drug addiction. And it's very easy to be discompassionate about their circumstance because it really is made by their own doing. A lot, all, most of our suffering, folks, is made by our own doing. And yet, they are created in the image of God. They are in need of salvation. The disciples looked at the blind man and wanted to satiate their own theological ego by asking this question where Jesus was concerned with the man being restored to the image of God. And so Jesus says, your question has nothing to do with your question. This man was born blind so that God would be glorified in him. This also, by the way, goes back to the fact that how do we look at those who are lost around us? Do we have a compassion for their lostness? Do we realize that God can be glorified in them, that God's desire is their restoration. His desire is to bring them out of spiritual blindness and into spiritual light. And Jesus answered, it was neither this man that sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who, we must work the works of him who sent me. What are those works? Those works are the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As long as it is day, night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. This is like the second time he's, second or third time he said this. So what is he doing here? He's saying that God, God ordained this man to be in this situation in order to display God's mercy and and provision bringing him out of blindness into the sight, and that this sight would represent Christ as the light of the world. Christ announces what the miracle is supposed to mean. So you have this announcement of what Christ, why Christ is going to do what he is going to do and what it represents. And it represents Christ being the light of the world, bringing us from darkness into light. So then we have this demonstration that happens. Now, remember, Jesus had just said that he was God. When Adam and Eve walked with God in the garden, they were walking with Jesus. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay and spittle and applied the clay to the man's eyes. Now, 
let me ask, I've mentioned this before, but I'll ask again. What is the significance of the mud? He created Adam out of dust. He created Adam out of dirt. Good job. That's a gold star. He created Adam out of... Jesus just said to the Pharisees that he was God the creator. And now he's going to prove it. He is going to take the dirt of the ground and he is going to make new eyes. And by the way, this, this is not lost on, on this man. Because if you look at the Old Testament, the giving of the giving of sight. Um, find it here. The giving of sight. Well, you look at Isaiah 29, 18, Isaiah 35, 5, Isaiah 42, 7. Let me just read those really quick. Hope I wrote those down right because I usually check before I write them down, make sure I'm writing them down right. Uh, 29, 18. Uh, I'll go back to 17. Is it not yet just a little while before Lebanon will be turned into a fertile field and the fertile field will be considered forest? This is the prediction of the Messiah. On that day, the deaf will hear the words of the book and out of their gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind will see the afflicted will also increase their gladness in the Lord and the needy of mankind will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. And then you have Isaiah 35, 5. These are all Messianic scriptures. Uh, let, let's see, let me go back a little bit. This is talking about the future of Zion. The wilderness and the desert will be glad and the Arabah will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It will blossom profusely and rejoice with rejoicing and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Encourage the exhausted, strengthen the feeble, Say to those with anxious heart, take courage, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance to recompense. Uh, the recompense of God will come, but he will save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be open and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped and the lame will leap like deer and the tongue of the mute will shout for joy and waters will break forth in the, in, in the wilderness. All of those things Jesus did, the deaf, the blind, the mute, the lame, all of those were all to be signs of the Messiah's coming. And then in Isaiah 42, 7, it says, um, thus says the Lord of God, I'm going to go back to verse 5, thus says the Lord of God who created the heavens and stretched them out who spread out the earth and its offspring, who gives breath to the people on it and the spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations. What did Jesus just say? I am the light of the world. To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon and those who dwell in darkness from prison. All of these verses in Isaiah that have to do with the blind receiving their sight are all messianic verses. So not only do you have Jesus fulfilling these verses, but he does it in a way that's reminiscent of the Genesis 1 creation of man. He, God formed Adam out of dirt. Jesus takes dirt 
and puts it in the guy's eyes and grows new eyes. And remember, Jesus had just said to the Pharisees three verses, four verses before that he was the I am. He was God creator. Okay, so whether this happens as Jesus is leaving the temple or whether John put it here to make this point, the point is being made in regards to the identity of Christ. So you see, you see that uh, Jesus just announced in chapter eight that he was the I am. As God created Adam out of the dust of the earth, Jesus creates new eyes the same way that conveys this message of his divinity. Now you have the, the, the next part of this demonstration, and that is the pool. You have the mud and you have the pool. Now, uh, this hat bears some similarity to the lame. Remember when Jesus healed the lame? One, it was done by a pool. Two, it was done in an unorthodox manner. Three, it was done on the Sabbath. And four, it created a stir. So first, let's look at, at three things in regard, in regard to the connection of the pool. It, he said, uh, see, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, applied the clay to his eyes. And, and again here, let me just say, that there is a picture of salvation in this who is it that made the clay who is it that applied it to the eyes very much like it is the spirit that grants faith and the spirit that grants repentance it is salvation is an act of god upon the soul of man and he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which translated means sent. So he went away and washed and came back seen. So you got three things here. The first thing is the name of the pool. The name of the pool. The name of the pool is sent. Jesus was sent to give sight to the blind. You have again a picture of water and of cleansing, washing away the, the dirt that represents, remember the dirt God made Adam from the dirt, it represents the flesh, The flesh of man is being washed away, new eyes. Very similar, by the way, remember what happened to Paul. He had, he couldn't see. And then it says, scales fell from his eyes. It's a very similar thing going on here because the, when the man comes back, he comes back a very different person. So you have first the name of the pool sent. Then you have the obedience of the man to obey and go and do what Jesus told him to do. And the action of washing. Jesus said, go and wash. This is very reminiscent of of the cleansing of salvation and again you cannot miss the example of christ's divinity that is happening here as well so then it says he goes and washes and then it says he comes back see so now we have a division that begins to take place. It says, therefore, the neighbors and those who previously saw him as a beggar were saying, is not this the one who used to sit and beg? So they recognize him as the 
They recognize him as the guy who has been begging, but it's it's like, have you ever have you ever been somewhere and you see someone you know and and it doesn't register because you're not seeing them in the context of you know where you always maybe you always see them at work and then you go to the store and they're there at the store and it takes a minute for you to register because you're so used to not seeing them in that context it's very similar here this guy comes back he's obviously happy he can see can you imagine though too that he is seeing things for the first time. I was watching this, this YouTube the other day, and it would kind of choke me up. The, uh, it was Father's Day or birthday or something, and I guess the father, and it's true, it's a YouTube, um, had, it was colorblind. I mean, couldn't see any color. And so his kids bought him these glasses that allow colorblind people to see color. And it, I'm telling you, it'll make you choke up. He put these glasses on and he just starts weeping. Because for the first time, he's seen the color of his children's eyes. He's seen the color all around him of everything, the presents that they got him, you know, and he just can't help it. He keeps putting them on and crying, taking them off, putting them on, crying, taking them off. Can you imagine? This man wasn't just colorblind. He was blind, blind. All of his life, he'd never seen a tree. He'd never seen a person a building, a dog or a cat or a sheep or a goat or water. And as he goes down into this baptismal of water and comes out, he comes out seeing. For the, I mean, this had to be a big deal you know that his friends had to have taken him down to the river to the pool of salome can you imagine when he comes up and goes i can see you what am i wearing what am i wearing and he, i don't know you know i don't know what red is but <laughs> you don't know what red is you don't know what blue is right now he's going to have to learn what the but he sees all of these things that he's never seen before. I'm going to tell you, when I got saved, I saw the world completely different overnight. Overnight. And it was, it was amazing. All of a sudden, the things that I did not notice whether they were truth or deception were plain to me. And this man is seeing all of this color and all of this stuff. And then he comes back. And of course, where do you think he's going to go? He's going to go home. Because it says his neighbors, therefore the neighbors and those who previously saw him as a beggar were saying, is this, is this not the one who sat and begged? Others were saying, this is he. And still others were saying, no, he just looks like him. But he's going, no, it's me. It's me. I remember, I remember when I first got saved my mom telling me one day, she goes, you are not you. <laughs> and my friends at school, like, dude, where, where did Tony go? You know, and that's the reaction. It, this is the same guy. No, he's not, can't be the same guy. 
Yes, it's me. And so you have this now reaction to this site, which is interesting because for anyone that has ever been saved, you get reaction from people that you know. Some of it good, some of it, some of it bad. It creates a division. It really does. I had a lot of friends in school that completely wrote me, a lot, that wrote me off. Completely. And so it, it says, uh, others are saying this is he, still others are saying no, but he is like him. And he kept saying, now get that, it's, it's this repetitive imperative. He kept having to tell them who he was. Now, you can imagine they were used to seeing this guy with, with, the, with no eyes. I mean, they were just, there was no color to them. He was born blind. We don't know if he was just born with no eyes. Or it doesn't matter. Because when Jesus took that dirt like God did with Adam and made Adam from the dirt of the ground, Jesus took that dirt and made eyes. Sending the message that he is the creator. I did it once. I can do it again. No biggie. But there is really, uh, there's really a, a division that is being created over this change in this man. This, this, this is all not just a miracle that proves the divinity of Christ, but it, but it also displays the miracle of salvation. And the response to the world around someone who's born again. So some say he is him. Some say he is not him. And he says, hey, I am him. And he has to keep telling them that. So they were saying to him, how then is your, are your eyes open? How where did you get the new eyeballs? If it's you, how in the world can you see again? And he answered, the man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes. I, it's a very interesting word. Anointed my eyes. He anointed my eyes. And he said to me, go to Salome and wash. So I went away and washed and received my sight. So what is, what is, their, what is their next question to him? Their first question is, how did this happen? And their second question is, where is he? Folks, I would hope that our life would reflect the power of salvation in such a way that people would ask, how did this happen? And when you tell them about Jesus, they would ask, where is he? I, I, I would really, really hope. So he gives them the story of what happened, and then you get this question regarding where is Jesus Christ? And then what does he say? I don't know. And the response, of course, to this, the response to this is to take him to the people who should know. But I'm going to stop right there.